Usually I'm not weighing that till like the night, but I woke up this morning at 193, which is like pretty good for me, pretty heavy. Bulk up to 200. Hopefully it won't be too chunky when I get there. And hit 405, then go on a cut. I don't really know what I would cut to, probably like 180 pounds, something like that. Next, we have a pretty complicated one, five hours. It's scheduled for five hours, which is a long time. Um, but it's three different procedures in like one case. So kind of explains it. He has a lot of stuff to do. Working with a cool doctor. I like him a lot. My scrub tech is cool. So shaping out to be a pretty good Friday. I don't start that case for like another hour and a half. So I'll probably just drink my coffee and then go sit outside for a little bit. Just downed about four eggs, some hash browns, and then um, that's the start of my morning. Hope you guys are doing well. Top of the morning on a Friday. You know, keep doing your thing, keep killing it. It is six o'clock, and we are headed to the gym right now. Just took our five grams of creatine, six grams of L-citrulline, uh. six grams of L-citrulline, a banana. So today, what I've had for food-wise, nutrition-wise. Three chicken breasts, two cups of coffee, I don't know, some other shit. I had some rice, potatoes, eggs, potatoes, eggs and potatoes, potatoes, tomatoes. I did have some tomatoes on top of the chicken. It was pretty fire. Um, you know what I don't understand is why caffeine is basically in every pre-workout. You know, I just got to think and I cracked this open. Uh, I just woke up from a little bit of a nap, got home from work, took a nap, woke up, cleaned my apartment, and now we're off to the gym. Um, my normal pre-workout, you know, same thing I've been showing, the orange juice, blue raspberry, L-citrulline, creatine. Tastes amazing, but then I got to thinking, like, I'm drinking this monster. Caffeine in it, obviously, vasoconstrictor for the caffeine. Do I really want it before arm day? So I'm gonna have a little bit of it, but got me thinking like, why do so many companies put caffeine in their products if it's a vasoconstrictor? But that's what's going on. You know, we got arm day and I don't have too much to say. Um, I made a new tank today. I made a new tank once I woke up because turns out, you know, whenever the armpits of a shirt go to a different color, I'm always just ripping off and turning it into a tank. So that's what we did with this shirt today. What's the game plan at the gym? Even See guys, even if I come up with a game plan for the gym right now, I'm not going to stick to it. So like, I kind of just get in there and go based off feel a lot of the time. I'm gonna start with shoulders. So we did 10 minutes in the sauna, onto our third warm up set. Pull ups, push ups, planks, and band work, and then rolling out. I guess the only thing different about the warm-up is doing close grip push-ups to get the triceps activated. First tricep movement we're doing, just set up for skull crushers, but we need to get some blood in the triceps. So we're going to start out with indecently light push-downs. Just because you can't go into heavy skull crushers before your elbows are warmed up. Let's get it one more. All right, that's all we need for the warm up. So the first heavy movement we got, skull crushers. And just like I'm doing like a bench press, I'm still gonna retract my scapula when I'm doing these. We're not gonna be doing too many movements today. We're just gonna do basic compound movements, go pretty heavy, and then a few supersets at the end. And starting off with triceps. See, this is why I say I can't, follow a workout program like I thought I was going to come in and start with shoulders out the window we're starting with triceps Ooh. 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 all right I'm thinking we're probably going to be doing quite a bit of supersets for the shoulders just superset shoulders with the buys and tries Probably not be supersetting the buys and tries all too often, but who knows, you know? Gonna do some side belt here. Boom. 
We... So obviously I'm not working my triceps when I'm doing these. So I feel like I'm still getting a decent break and just adding a little bit of a pump into the workout. Plus these 40s were just sitting out. Somebody forgot to put them away. So I figured I'd snag them. I'll give you guys a different angle for the last two sets here. But this is only my second and I plan on doing four. There's lots of ways you can do skull crushers, right? You can go down, touch the nose, touch the eyebrows, touch the top of your hairline, go behind your head. You can do all of them. It's just wherever you feel it. Don't have a rear delt pump yet, but we'll get there. Most aesthetic part of the shoulder, rear delts. I also think, what do you guys think about this? Most aesthetic part of a guy's leg, quad. Most aesthetic part of a girl's, obviously, glutes, right? I was planning on putting the camera right where that guy's at for the last two sets. I might put it next to him. Just because I want to see the different camera angle. I like seeing the different camera angles. I can just move my bench up as well. This is what we got. Try some push downs. This is probably what we'll finish with, at least for compound movements. Maybe some supersets towards the end just to get some more blood going. But we're probably gonna do like three or four more heavy sets here. This, this cable feels better than usual too. I don't know why. I feel like there's like less WD-40 on the poles. Every single working set so far has been eight reps. So I don't have a specific amount of time that I'm waiting in between my sets. I'm really just going based off feel. <sighs> That was real heavy, guys. I'll show you. Now we're about to hit the stack. Try to, at least. You know, we'll try to get it for eight. My triceps definitely aren't the strongest. So when I failed 405, basically all I did for like a month and a half, two months of lifting was focusing on getting the 405. And I literally got the final weight, like well past the sticking point, like past the sticking point by far. I got it all the way up, but I literally couldn't lock out my elbows and that's where I failed. All right. Wow. All right, that feels pretty good. I'm gonna drop it down and go a little bit lighter, turn it into a drop set. Ah. One of my favorite tricep exercises. Just regular old dips. Focusing on time under tension. Also the contraction quite a bit. Could have done 20 reps there. Could have done 30 reps there. Just going fast and quick. But like time under tension, focusing mind muscle connection. It's like, especially for a drop set or when you're just trying to focus on getting blood into the muscle. Highly recommend it. What can we do next? I see a long rope in front of me and uh, kind of want to do some face pulls with it. I think that's what we're going to hit. I'm going to do a 360 with you guys. Feel pretty light doing these. There's certain movements you just can't do heavy. Wow, as I say that, let me just fall backwards on myself. Ah. Feels pretty good. First bicep movement we got, hammer curls. And we're probably gonna superset this with dips again, because the dips felt amazing.
Hey guys, whenever I'm doing hammer curls, just like I'm doing back, focus, you know, give your bicep that extra half second to really stretch at the bottom. I know I like swing back a little bit, but I'm just making sure that my bicep is fully extended before I come back up. Oh, arms are feeling good. Back to face pulls, focusing on getting blood into the rear delts rather than in the traps. And it's kind of hard to do, honestly. That's, I still don't think that's gonna be it. I'm gonna be right there. So whenever I'm doing these guys, first off, you can put the, put the cable wherever you want. I have it really high right now. Don't always have it really high. Usually probably eye level, but doesn't really matter to me. Um, as long as I can get the stretch and the squeeze for like here, focusing on getting blood into the rear delt rather than the traps, even though we're gonna be using both, but trying to isolate the rear delt, just mind muscle connection. Yep, yep, yep. I was thinking like we could probably finish with some single arm here, but you know, I'm still getting a good pump from doing it bilaterally or just regular push down. So that's what we're going to keep going with. Normally I'd switch to isolation here, but for this workout in particular, like this just felt great for me. So this is what we're sticking with. Next, we're going back to hammers, guys. Or we could do, we could do supinated and start working on the peak. Let's see how it feels. I also feel like I can push more blood into my arms just by holding the dumbbells. I feel like it's just rushing to my forearms at that point. Yeah, haven't hit enough rear delt. I guess the question becomes, can you ever hit enough rear delt? The answer is no. We'll try to go a little bit closer, switch up the grip on this a little bit. Instead of going thumbs under, we'll go thumbs over. Feels great. We need to hit more side delt. I don't really know what I want to do. All right, not a whole lot longer to be honest. We're basically through the workout. We're gonna do, I don't know, two or three more supersets and we'll call it. So on this one, gonna be a little bit more of a swing, but more of a range of motion than just going from here to here. So grab some 30s. We're gonna go basically under the legs and then try to get a contraction all the way at the top and then finishing, try to finish basically shoulder height. So I wonder if you guys can tell, like right there, shorter range of motion than the first set that I initially did for the rear delts. And it's because I already have a pump in my rear delt, so maybe it's just in my mind that it's less of a movement for me, but I feel like it is. Next, ass sweat, kickbacks. Ah. Somebody in the comments said to lower the handle on this. So we're gonna give it a shot, see what it feels like. It's pretty hard to go wrong with an isolation movement like this, so I feel like I'm gonna like it. I like most movements. 
Real close up though. Maybe a little too low for me because I, I naturally want to bring my elbow up right there to get a little bit more of a stretch. Let me try something else. Let me see if I can just bring my elbow back a little bit. Yeah, I still want it a little higher. Not much higher, but. Yeah. That feels great. All right, guys, we haven't done, we haven't done a whole lot of biceps for this workout. So I'm just gonna show you what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be doing virtually all the weights. I'm kidding, but we do have a superset on our hands, okay? So we're gonna start pretty heavy, do a little bit of a little swinging motion to it, especially starting out. Start out with 60s, and then we're just gonna progressively work our way down. Starting with hammers, Heavy's first set. How many sets are we going to go through, guys? That's his question. So my thing is hammer curls are easier to do. So we're starting with the hammers with the heavier weights. As we go down, we'll work more into supinated curls. 45s would be really hard. Stop 42 and a halves. We have 30s over here, so that's what we'll finish with. I'm thinking this is gonna be the last one, last set. That's the workout. I'm out of here. Peace. What's going on, guys? Just finished up the workout. What a workout. Felt amazing. Um, and I don't know why this is on my mind. It was a Mac Miller song that just come in, that came into my head. And a verse on the Mac Miller song is, I got brothers, I don't need no friends. I feel like it's much better to have a few close people around you than a bunch of fake people that are nice to you. So don't try to go and fit in. I don't have a whole lot of friends or a bunch of friends, um, but I've never been that way. Like I'm a pretty introverted person. I don't want a whole lot of friends. And then on top of that, I got brothers, you know? And I was just thinking like, I got brothers, I don't need no friends, but I got, I have good friends around me. Um, I don't know why that was popping into my head. Uh, earlier today, I was just thinking, so a little question for you guys, maybe to end the video, maybe not, but would you rather have, would you rather be around somebody that is fake, but nice to you, or that's just like a genuine asshole or like a genuine douchebag? I wanna say if you're not authentic, something negative, but I don't wanna end on like a negative note. Something I, that came to my head when I was just driving. I'm driving to Starbucks right now. Saturday morning uh, is kind of my kind of my thing. I'm gonna go get some Starbucks. I'm gonna drive around for a little bit, get some gas, and then we'll start the day. I feel like young people are being pushed more towards steroids than when I was a kid. And I kind of want to show people 
that you don't need steroids to get a great physique, and that led, led me down the line of thinking Alex Eubank is a perfect example. He is a he is a great physique, and it's pretty easy for me to tell who's taking steroids and who's not, or maybe who's taking them in the past. That'll probably be a little bit harder. But I've been lifting for 12, almost 12 or 13 years naturally, and I've been able to. I don't know, I guess I've been around the gym culture for a long time. Uh, I've done this for over half my life of trying to change my physique. And I've, I've been able to obtain a pretty good physique that I'm pretty happy with. But, you know, always still trying to change it. Always something that you can improve, right? But, so the steroids thing got me thinking about Alex Eubank. Just because I think he... I don't think he's taken steroids. I also think there's something about building your physique naturally that has benefits over taking steroids. So let me give you guys an example. Like if you're, just view it, view it like this way, or this is how I view it in my head. You have an individual relationship with the gym, okay? And think about it literally as a relationship. As soon as you start taking steroids, you're cheating on the relationship because now you're going into the gym and let's say you're having, before you were taking steroids, your relationship's like a seven out of 10. And once you start taking steroids, it's a 10 out of 10. It's amazing, everything's handy dandy. But then a few months goes by and obviously you have to come off cycle and what's going to happen with your relationship with the gym at that point? So. Are you, are you in a better spot than when you started before you started taking the steroids? Yeah, I guess it's just something to think about. And I think like young people are being pushed, or I think young people are being influenced more today than they were the previous five, 10, 15, 20 years to take steroids. And I think the internet is making it younger and younger for people that are wanting to take steroids. And I think a lot of people, a lot of younger people think that the way to achieve their dream body or their physique is through steroids. And then I just view it as like you're cheating on the relationship with it, but most young people don't even have like an actual relationship with the gym. Right? That, you know, that's the way I think about a lot of things. Life's going to be okay. And whatever you throw at me, it's going to be okay. There's a lot of negative things that could happen. There's a million negative things that could happen. But I always think about the idea of like, you gotta go pick up your cross and then bear it. I think that's something you kinda do at the beginning of every day. How you decide to wake up. Top of the morning. Morning, morning. Top of the morning.